Hi, I'm Laura Albert. I'm a professor of industrial and systems engineering at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. It's my pleasure to discuss time management and work-life balance with you today. I have a lot of experience with time management and work-life balance and challenging situations. I had three children pre-tenure, best three decisions I've ever made. After tenure, I became a single mom and have actually been a solo parent. My um, ex-husband lives out of state and I take care of the kids most of the year. This was really challenging to have three fairly young children. Uh, the good news is that I was promoted to full professor last year. So all along, I've tried to be a productive fa faculty member with high levels of research and service. And I even took on an administrative position for two years as the, I was the assistant dean for graduate affairs in the College of Engineering at UW-Madison. And this required me to do many duties in addition to all my faculty duties. So it required a lot of extra juggling and I managed. And interestingly enough, some of my time management tips, especially as a working mom have been featured in a book about computer science called Algorithms to Live By. And it's about how you can use algorithms in your everyday life. And in one part of the book, I dis discussed how I use the critical path method and project management from operations research to uh, get my kids out of the door in the morning in the most efficient way possible. So I'm walking the walk and living the dream. As I reflected in preparation of this panel, I came to the conclusion that I use three basic strategies for time management. I try to do less, I try to do it faster, and I try to get more done by doing it at the right time. The first rule for managing time that I use is to do less. As a newly minted assistant professor, who's been shielded from service responsibilities, you may have more time for research than you will at any other time in your career, which is a little surprising given that there are so many things for you to do right now. So your main tools are really to do it faster and to do it at the right time. However, there are times when you need to do less. Regardless, there's a lot that you need to grow into and that you will grow into over the next few years. So have a growth mindset for yourself and give yourself a chance to figure out how to do it less, how to do it faster, and how to do it at the right time. In terms of doing less, the goal isn't really to do less. There's all of these amazing things you want to do before tenure, but you want to do less so you have more time for your research and teaching and some of the things that really matter for tenure. Early on, someone told me that I should stay ruthlessly focused on my mainstream of research and protect that research time as much as possible and not get distracted by side projects. That was really good advice. In terms of other tools for doing less so I can protect my research time, I try to be very efficient with email. I have an only handling at once policy, which I can't do for all email, but for emails that require a one or two sentence response, I reply to those once a what immediately, they're done, and I move on with my other tasks. If I have to revisit them later, all of those little tasks add up and eat into my research time. I often find myself trying to manage my service commitments. So if I'm asked to review a paper, I often ask myself if I have time in the next two weeks. If I want to review and I do have time, I agree. And if I don't have time in the next two weeks, I decline the review and see if I can review the next one that I'm asked to review. As I became better at teaching, I realized that teaching was eating up more and more of my time. I really enjoyed it and I could see that what I was doing was making a difference. My mentors told me that all professors really enjoy teaching and we have to set reasonable limits on teaching because we have other things we have to do. And that was great advice. So what I did is focused on doing the best I could with the time I had. And I've had plenty of examples of good teaching and I try to most emulate the good things. I also invest in one or two improvements every year or every semester. There's more I want to do, but sometimes I save some of those improvements for the next time I teach a course. And finally, I spend a lot of time over preparing for exams. A little extra work up front 
really saves time in the long run because problems with exams are very time consuming. Uh, some of my mentees want to know how to say no, and I think it's definitely okay to say no. I always start with a thank you when I say no, and explain that you'd maybe really uh, appreciate them asking you, but you just don't have time now to make this a priority. When I'm asked to review a paper and I don't have time, I always suggest other reviewers. And if this is something that you really do want to do, and you can do it next year, you can always ask to be considered next year. Sometimes they're going to be looking for people next year, and you've done them a favor. And importantly is think about how to say yes, right? So always do a good job on things you agree to do, right? And if you don't feel you can do that, then maybe you should say no, right? But it's good to be a good colleague. I always remember people that do a good job. You should be comfortable setting limits and saying no when you're feeling overwhelmed. Uh, but one thing that it's easy to get in the habit of doing is skipping department seminars and skipping meetings with your colleagues. And I recommend getting out of your office on a regular basis to network. This means attending department meetings, attending department seminars, giving talks at conferences, and making time to connect with others, especially about research. This makes a big difference in terms of your network, and it's also really important to exchange intellectual ideas with others, especially since we can't see so many of our colleagues face to face. I find that I really need to say yes to some of these opportunities. I find the balance that's best for me. And ultimately, even though this takes away some of my research time, it's usually a good investment. Moving on to part two, do it faster. I think my main tip for doing it faster is to give yourself deadlines. There's something called Parkinson's Law which tells us that work expands to fill the time available. So if we give ourselves less time, we will do the same tasks in less time. Right? So the corollary is, and one way to do this, is to have a life. Right? So you have less time because you've got that hobby later that you want to do. You want to spend time with your family. You want to go running. You want to do something, go on a trip in the weekend, do it, right? And you'll notice that perhaps that you can get some of your tasks done a little quicker with these deadlines. There are a few things that I do to work quicker. One is I make a to-do list every morning um, and it has the things that I have to do in the day and, and then my goals for the week and then maybe a couple of stretch goals. In terms of teaching, again, giving myself deadlines, try to return assignments within a week, trying to respond to all emails within 48 hours. Eventually, I just you know become more efficient at doing these things. I was off also advised to park on a downhill slope, right? So this is a you know I guess a parking analogy, which is that I finish my work one day to try to make it easier for myself to get started the next day. And this is an efficiency tip. So if I know I'm going to work on a paper revision the next day, the previous day I might get out the materials, review them, review the reviewer comments, open up all my files, make sure they're all handy. And so the next morning when I'm ready to get to work, I can just jump right in. This helps me reduce my startup costs. I also prioritize teaching innovations that will save me time in the future. Other teaching innovations just take time, right? So this helps me prioritize uh, what makes me quicker. Um, also ask mentors for tips if there's something specific that you think is taking too long. And finally, I am pretty slow at a lot of new things this year because there's so much that I'm doing online that just has a learning curve. And I've been reminding myself that I'll actually be faster at this at the end of the year once I've gotten a little bit better at what I need to do. It's important to recognize that you are going to grow and you are going to improve and you are going to adapt and you'll naturally get faster at many things that you need to do. You'll also have more and more to do as you go and I would recommend not getting in the habit of working long days seven days a week and saying I'll make time for that after tenure which may be years in the future. The secret is that after tenure you'll be busier than ever. So you have to operate for long-term sustainability. And tip number three is do it at the right time. So the idea here is that 
that it's possible to spin so many plates if we can sequence the tasks in the right order so that we don't drop, drop them. All right, so this is all about sequencing tasks for efficiency. Okay, as I mentioned before, I make a to-do list in the morning. This helps me kind of bunch and group the activities I need to do. It also helps me find my critical path to get through the day. There's certain things I need to do first. And also if I know I have a big chunk of time where I need to really be productive, I know when to schedule that in my day. And if I have a few t minutes between meetings, I try to get to some of these emails and some of the small tasks. So that to-do list really helps me plan my day. There are a lot of startup costs to so switching and meetings and interrupt things that just slow us down. Okay, so I try to be aware of when I might have those interruptions and plan for them. These days I'm working at home, so I know when my daughters have lunch and I know that that's usually not going to be a very productive part of my day, even if I have nothing else going on in my schedule. I've learned to work in small bursts on small tasks like email and responding to teaching questions when I have them just to keep the time that I have for research more protected. I also try to reserve a few times during each week just for research, right? And I've been trying to pay attention about when I'm most productive at certain tasks and make sure that I schedule fewer meetings then and make more time for research then, right? So it's trying to do it at the right time. And finally, I try to reduce interruptions. I turn off notifications, turn off my, my phone, stop checking email, stop checking Twitter, and I have a do not disturb at, uh, outside my office. I put a scrunchie on my door when I'm recording or in, a, in an important meeting. Okay, so there's a strategy out there that gets to doing things at the right time, and it's the big rocks first management strategy. So tasks can be important or not important or urgent and not urgent. Right? So we spend a lot of our time doing the things that are urgent, many of which are not important because we have these looming deadlines coming up. What's really important for tenure is the research tasks that are not urgent but really important. Right? We can't get tenure without these things. And they're on our critical path. Right? So if we spend so much time working just before deadlines, it's hard to make time for the things on our critical path. Okay, so it's good just to be mindful that we need to do these to get them a higher, a higher priority in our schedule. And we could do this by sequencing. Okay. Also, it's good to acknowledge that you won't magically have more time next week. You're probably going to be just as busy as you are this week. So think about when you schedule your tasks and don't assume that you'll have more time the next week. Instead, maybe make time for something that's really important but not urgent in the near future. I've been reflecting a lot on being a professor with three kids who attend three different schools and they're doing so online at home. I've been busier than ever. I take on all sorts of extra duties, things that I never would have done last year. I provide a lot of IT support for my family. I have to kind of sometimes make lunch in the middle of the day and I'm constantly reminding the kids to get exercise and sometimes, you know, even baking some bread during the day, but I like baking some bread. So I feel like I've become a really great juggler, right? And it's definitely more difficult now than it was a year ago. What I've been doing to maintain work-life balance in the COVID era is first and foremost to limit my Zoom meetings to a max of four hours a day because I really get Zoom fatigue beyond this level. I've also been agreeing to take on less time-sensitive service roles, and this frees up additional flexibility in my schedule, which really helps with all the little things. I find that I should interrupt my kids before they interrupt me, and this actually is really helpful in limiting the interruptions that occur at bad times. So I do this when I have to go to the bathroom or get a snack or get some more coffee. I interrupt my kids and see what they're up to and if they need anything. And then later on, I'm able to focus on work with fewer interruptions. I've also been thinking about what I need to ask my chair and colleagues for that I didn't have to last year. I've been asking for more deadline extensions this year than I did before. I've also been thinking about what kind of greater help I need and what kind of help I need just to manage my online courses. 
and I'm already thinking about when I want to teach next semester and in what formats. Surprisingly, the 8 a.m. slot is working really well for me this semester. When my schedule allows, I try to attend the virtual group gatherings at my university, which is usually professors who are also mothers. This really helps me feel connected to others and kind of keeps me going. I've been keeping up all my hobbies and have actually taken on some new hobbies with my kids. We've started playing tennis and we do a lot of jigsaw puzzles. And this has been a good source of relaxation and closeness uh, between myself and my family. And it's hard, but I've been trying to get enough sleep every night. I want to mention a few specific tools instead of just general principles that increase and decrease my efficiency. I'll start with the tools that make me more efficient. One is keeping a calendar. I love Google Calendar. The second is all of these cloud storage tools such as Dropbox, Box, and Google Documents. Less so maybe since I'm always working on the same computer from home, but I still make great use of these documents. The third is white noise playlists. I'm a fan of the babbling brook. Calendar invites has made my life considerably easier. I spend less time rearranging my calendar. In terms of finding good times to meet, I prefer when is good to doodle. It's just a lot easier to fill out and I don't get these polls with 100 options in them. I also like to do Pomodoros, which is working in bursts of 25 minutes uninterrupted at a time. You can Google this to find out more, but this is a great way to just be really productive in short amounts of time. I have a number of Alexa devices in my home and I mainly use them to for my children to remind them when they have to go to orchestra practice or start the day. And this is just a great way to keep them on track without me getting interrupted so much during the day. I also like a few tools for just staying organized. Uh, OneNote, Scanner Pro for receipt or paper scanning, PDF editing tools. These ultimately save me a lot of time. And I have multiple computer monitors in my home office and I can't function without them. All right, then there are the tools that make me less efficient. What The first is notification and badges on my smartphone. I just turn most of that off. Um, I have to use Outlook mail for work and the Outlook calendar and I do not like them at all. I'm so much slower on Outlook than I am on other mail clients. I've already mentioned that I don't like Doodle and I really don't like Doodle polls with more than 10 options. And sometimes I get them back and there are 80 options or 100 options and I do want to cry. I study security so I know how important two-step or two-factor authentication is, but it's a pain. <laughs> I also appreciate when people send me things that are you know, mobile friendly and not a PDF attachment just to have a PDF attachment, especially when it's something like a link that could have just been pasted in the email text. Right? I like to handle email really quickly. Oh, I mentioned Doodle here again. I really don't like Doodle. And I also don't like long emails with misleading subject lines, right? Put it, if it's important enough, put it in the title and that really helps me keep track of all my email messages. In summary, these are a few things that worked for me for time management and work-life balance. They may or may not work for you. I appreciate you attending this talk and I look forward to answering some of your questions later.